Okay, um, these are just really simple questions. I'm just gonna start asking you. These are some easier so to read this. Okay, um, this is Mr. Burner, Burner, and um, his first name is Art. Your middle name is Henry. Henry, Art Henry Burner, and I'm just gonna start asking some really simple questions. They're just um, this is just for history, and okay, let's start off here. Um, what are you? What are your memories of your, your grandparents and when you were young? Well, I was fortunate enough to have uh, both grandparents live uh, pretty long. Uh, my grandmother loved to, my grandmother on my father's side loved to play uh, uh, dice. And we used to play uh, bunko all the time. And she loved this thing. And she used to love. Uh, violin music so we always had to spend a little time tuning the radio in for her to try and find violin music and years ago used to get a lot of it but uh, didn't get the jazz like you do today right. and my grandfather was out of town he was a peddler actually he sold uh, men's clothing he was a tailor mm -hmm. but they called him peddlers in that time because he went from town to town he went to the people rather than having them oh, come then to a store he went to the homes yes of the towns yeah okay. and uh my other grandparents, uh, well, they were uh, a little more, uh, not so much European. They came from England, but I mean, uh, they were more modern. My grandmother had uh, 13 children, and my mother was number three. Out of the 13? Out of the 13. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was a wonderful cook. We used to go there all the time for all the holidays. And with that many kids, you can imagine how many of us there were. <laughs> my grandfather on my mother's side was also uh, a fireman. He owned a hardware store, and uh, he was a plumber, all three. Okay. So he was quite in demand. Uh, we all lived in Cicero at that time. Chicago? South? Was it Cicero? Cicero. Cicero, straight uh, east of here. Okay, straight east. Just, uh, it's a suburb of Chicago. Okay. Um... What year were you born? 1918. 1918? Oh, no, I thought you said 1819. Wait, wait. So you grew up in Cicero, huh? No, I was, uh, we, when I was wait, two years old, we moved to uh, Berwyn. Oh, okay. So I spent all my days in Berwyn. All your young years in yes. Berwyn? What was your um, favorite thing when you were a child? Like, what was your favorite thing to do? I love baseball. Oh, you played a lot yeah, of baseball? Yeah, we played a lot of baseball. In fact, we used to play uh, having four sisters. She had a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends. We used to play in the alley. Oh, okay. And uh, we played softball. And we had to be very careful not to hit it in over the fence because some of the neighbors didn't like us running in their yard. So Getting the balls? Yeah. That's funny. And uh, uh, there weren't as many cars uh, running the side streets either. I lived on 30th Street and Kennel. And it was uh, pretty nice to play in the street too. How'd you um, how'd you meet Mrs. Berman? Well, she was on vacation at Powers Lake, Wisconsin, with her family, and I went to Powers Lake, Wisconsin, with my family. And uh, I was fishing with my boyfriend, my dad, and a friend of my father's, and we had had no luck for three days. The fourth fishing? day, we did very well. We caught a lot of fish. Put them on the stringer, and we were rowing back to go home for dinner do some swimming, and all of a sudden my dad says uh, to my friend, Tiny, hold up that string of fish so I can see how many we got on there. Okay. Tiny goes to hold up the string of fish, there wasn't no fish, no stringer. He had wrapped it around the oar, and when we went to pull away, he lifted the oar up to make sure it was in right. locked right, and as he did, the stringer just pulled away. So we were leaning over the sides of our boat looking for the fish rowing back, and uh, Margaret saw me doing that, she saw all of it doing it, and she came down to the end of the pier and she said, what'd you guys do, lose a watch or something? We said, no, we lost our stringer of fish. She said, oh my gosh, and she started to walk away. And uh, she was very attractive, and I said, uh, don't walk away because if you find that, uh, we may come back and see whether or not you might have found the fish because it might come up right here, because it should float after a little while. And uh, so afterwards, uh, after dinner, my boyfriend and I got in the boat, went down there. See and if the fish came back? 
Now, the, yeah, that's what we went down for, uh-huh. just to ask. Uh-huh. But instead, they had outdoor movies uh, where we stayed. Uh-huh. So uh, we asked her if she and her girlfriend, her sister, wanted to go with us. Well, her sister was engaged, so she wouldn't come with us. So just uh, the three of us went to the outdoor movie. So we started a relationship then and lasted pretty long. How many years have you been married for? Uh, that's a good question. Let's see. Uh, Forty-eight and a half. Forty-eight and a half. That's a long time. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a long time. Where'd you go to school at? I went to school at uh, Morton. Morton. Emerson uh, Grammar School, Morton High School, Morton Junior College, and University of Illinois. Then I went to uh, the uh, John Marshall Law School. And uh, you went to law school? Yeah. No, and then the war came, and I'd gotten married in the meantime. Yeah. And when the war came, uh, I had to go to war, so I didn't finish any of the law okay. education. Talking about the war, um, what do you remember of? Do you remember anything of World War One or no? You're no, too I young. was just born. You're just born yeah. 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 So, I had a lot of mementos from there, though. <laughs> World War One? Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you remember? I'm sure you remember a lot because you're actually in the war itself. Let's see. What do you? Well, let's talk, first talk about before World War II. Let's talk about. Um, do you remember anything about the Great Depression? Oh yes, very much. What What's your biggest? What do you remember? Well, I can remember that we had to uh, skimp quite a bit, and uh, my dad was working steady. He was very fortunate. Uh, he worked at the Western Electric Company, and he's very fortunate to. Have a job. Have a job and make uh, good money. But uh, with four kids, we also took in uh, a boy who had, was uh, 12 years old and uh, had lost his mother. And his father worked on a ship. He was a ship yeah. steward. Okay. So uh, he was too young to be left alone. So we took him, he was a friend of my father, so we took him in with us. So I had a companion quite a bit of my life. And with the five of us, and my dad uh, and mother, it was uh, not too easy to get along, but we managed. And uh, I remember skimping quite a bit on things, though. Uh, to go to a movie was a real treat, yeah. and to have an ice cream cone was a real treat. Yeah. So you were so you're really lucky, actually, during the oh, Great Depression. Oh, yeah, very fortunate. For your father to... And so then there were five of you, then? Yeah. Five kids? Five kids. Six altogether. Oh, six? Yeah, okay. counting myself. Yeah, right. That's... Okay, um, what do you remember of um, World War II? Well, uh, I can recall the day that uh, they uh, bombed Pearl Harbor. And that was a shock. And they announced it over the radio. And, uh, of course, everybody was really uh, shook up. And I went and uh, registered immediately, as all the other guys did. Oh, really? And, uh... Was it 1941 you registered in? Yeah. And, uh, in registering, they would have a draft, and, uh... Knowing that I was married, I knew that I would be one of the ones that would call be called a little bit later than some of the other fellas. And, uh... When it was getting close to the time that I figured I might be called, I thought, well, I'm going to join the Air Corps. So before went, they called you? Yeah, so I went and volunteered for the Air Corps. I wanted to be a pilot, and uh, I was accepted. I took the exam and uh, went to Fort Sheridan for my training, basic training. Right. Then we went to uh, Shepherd Field and uh, got my uh, boot training there and made the rest of the basic. From uh, there, uh, they sent us to... Uh, Willow Run, Michigan, for our school. Okay. For pilot school? Yeah, for pilot school. Okay. And uh, then from there, they sent me to uh, from Ypsilanti. I went back down to uh, Keesler Field, Mississippi. Okay. And in there, uh, we started our flight training. And uh, it was then that uh, they had so many pilots that they had to wash out a bunch of us. Okay. So I was in the crew that was washed out and went into uh, mechanic training. For airplanes? For airplanes. Okay. So we used, we learned how to uh, assemble, disassemble the plane from front to back. 
Oh, really? The whole yeah, plane? the whole plane. And this was uh, B-24s. That's a huge plane. They started on B-17s when we started flying, but when it was uh, time to learn the mechanism and everything, we right. had it in an emergency. And I became a flight sergeant. And uh, from there, see, I, I traveled so much. <laughs> uh, I went to uh, Little Run, Michigan. I'm not Little Run, Michigan, excuse me. I went to Seattle, Washington. Okay. And there, Boeing Army Air Base, uh, to learn how to disassemble and assemble the Boeing uh, engines. So after we learned that, uh, they sent me down to Fort Myers, Florida, and uh, then Margaret came down and joined me. I was down there in Florida for eight months and uh, did a lot of flying every day. Uh, I had a few tragedies. Uh, one night, uh, one of the fellows was scheduled to uh, go, and he said he didn't want to go. Would I take his place? And he would take mine, and we would trade, which you could do, you yeah. know, because we were flying 24 hours around the clock. And uh, so, we you flying on shifts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when we were flying that time, uh, my plane that he was flying in my place, Margaret and I had uh, she had come down to live with me. Then we lived right. in a trailer. I could do that because I was a sergeant, and uh, it was she worked in the motor pool there too as a, a driver. And uh, this one night we'd gone to a movie, and as we came out of the movie, I had to see my plane take off, and I said, oh, there's old B-24 going up. And uh, it was number 24 also. And it had gone up about, uh, I'd say, maybe 900 feet. And all of a sudden, there was a terrific explosion. Inside the plane? Yeah, the plane blew up, and everybody in the plane was killed. Huh. And uh, I, they never did uh, let us know exactly what happened, what happened but uh, malfunctioned someplace and it must have hit the gas tanks and the whole plane blew up. But you just switched planes out of just that, that man's decision then. Yeah, yeah. We could do that uh, as, as long as it was, fellas under us couldn't because we were a crew. Right. And uh, our job, our main job was to get up every morning at four o'clock and we would go have breakfast, and at 4.30 or 5 o'clock, we would head for the uh, flight line. Right. We'd go down there, and we'd uh, uh, pre-warm all the engines on the planes. And we we didn't move the plane at all, but we put it through all the maneuvers that you could possibly put it through. We had a regular checkout sheet that you used. Right. And uh, that was a lot of fun, because it was always interesting to uh, the whole crew, because everybody had a job. Yeah. Very interesting. When we flew, uh, the pilots used to uh, enjoy going back because we were training gunners. That was our main job down there. Was We were the, the uh, in charge of the plane, of our plane, and it was also the pilots as they came back from overseas would uh, not have enough points to be discharged. So <laughs> we would have them as our pilots on the plane. Okay. And. Uh, they had flown so much they were a little bit yeah shaken out well they were uh, it was boring to them All so right. they would ask us to fly the plane and we'd fly the plane and they'd go back and ask the gunners if they could shoot a little bit at the targets oh it was pretty good except now and then they'd get a little carried away and shoot a few of the cattle down there for <laughs> we had to be careful we couldn't go too low with the planes because some of these guys were a little bit uh, crazy then when I uh uh, Margaret got pregnant down there, and uh, I was shipped to uh, Tennessee, and so Margaret came home, mm -hmm. and uh, she had Louise, and uh, she was born in 45, and uh, when I was discharged, it was funny because you went by points. Now, I never went overseas, and I was never in actual combat. Uh, did a lot of gun shooting, but never had an enemy. Right. And I, that was fortunate for me, too. I didn't have to have all the sadness that a lot of the guys did and some of the things like that. But uh, it was always interesting to uh, be able to talk to these fellas. And one day uh, they posted the numbers on the board of all the people. The war was over. Right. 
So they were going to discharge us, and you had to have so many points for discharge. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went to be uh, look at the board, my name was up there, and I had way more points than I was supposed to have. They'd made a mistake. So, but I had to get in line. They said uh, everybody with this many points has to fall out at such and such a time and be over at the uh, headquarters. So I did. I went over there and had this uh, flight sergeant. <coughs> Master Sergeant he was, sitting there and he looked at me and he says, you've got enough points? He said, I, I thought I was one of the guys that trained you. <coughs> I said, well, my name's on the list. He says, it sure is. All right. And then he stamped my pass and put me in there. So they Off you go. got me ready for discharge. <laughs> then the way I got out of the Army was also a mistake. <coughs> uh, the warrant officer looked at my record and said, this can't be. And he says, let me check these points. And he checked them. And he says, you're not ready for discharge. He says, I'm going to put you in a different barracks. So I went back to my barracks and uh, told the fellow in charge there that I was going to be moved out. So let me know as soon as he heard it. So two days went by and uh, the fellow in the bunk next, next to me said, uh, hey, have you seen the list? Your name's on it. I said, it's not supposed to be. He says, go look. So I went over, and sure enough, my name was on the discharge list again. So I had to follow the rules, so I had to fall out again, get in line. I got in line, and the sergeant that was in charge of uh, your papers was sitting there, and when it was my turn, I walked up, and the phone rang. And he looked at me, and he says, uh, you've got this many points, and he picks up the phone, and he says, Hell no, I'm not going on KP again. No way! And he reached over and picked up the stamp, forgot to check my records, stamped everything like that, handed it to me, and I went on. I was discharged about uh, six months early. You wanted to leave? Oh, sure. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I had enough <laughs> of the Army. Then they sent us back to Fort Sheridan where I was discharged. Yeah, you had a lot of luck in there. Oh, yeah. Just very fortunate. The plane accident, the plane incident, and getting discharged yeah. really early. That's great. That's a lot of luck that most people would have. Um, so that's about as much as anything else about World War II? Or? Well, I lost a couple of buddies in the war, and uh, a lot of my friends, almost all my friends went in, a lot of my relatives. Uh, there are a lot of sad things happen that uh, you don't like to even talk about because, right. of the, you know, it's uh, right. yeah. been so long now that uh, you're over it. Uh, but there are a lot of good things that came out of it that uh, brought a lot of people closer together and uh, of course our economy was uh, up and down and uh, we were all mad at uh, the Japanese but now we've right. rebuilt the Japanese and now the Japanese are happy with us and it's an altogether different world now. Yeah, it's because of World War II. So, um, alright, I think we'll switch topics here. I'm just, um, what, do you remember anything about, I'm sure you do, but what, are you, what do you remember of um, Vietnam? Well, uh, having gone through the other war and uh, knowing that uh, this thing was the tragedy that it was, uh, we were all on call in the event anything serious came up where they ran out of people or something, we would be called and uh, so we had to register again. For Vietnam? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Because uh, if there was tragedies, you know, and they, right. like uh, when in May when we lost uh, one whole uh, battalion uh, in World War II, right. and uh, that was tragic because at the time they had to replace all those guys. And when they have something like that happen, they don't care where they pick them from. They just pick them and get the bodies over there, and that's right. why we just had it. They just had our name on file. That's all. That we were still alive and still <laughs> able yeah. to. Uh, Function sure. and we're healthy. If you were not healthy, of course, they put you in 4F. Right. But uh, a lot of the young boys that I know were there, uh, and they brought me back some souvenirs from my collection. From Vietnam? Yeah. And it, it's a it's a shame. It was a war that uh, we never should have got into, everybody says. But at the same time, uh, if we hadn't, you don't know what might have happened. But it's just like some of the other things, second guessing is always easy, you know. Yeah. Monday morning quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, what was, um, who's your favorite president? Well, I thought that uh, in the past that uh, Hoover 
did a very, very good job. Uh, I liked uh, Roosevelt's uh, treatment of the war. He was fine, but I still liked Hoover. Hoover was your favorite? Yeah, I thought Hoover was uh, one of my best. Hoover? Yeah. What was your, um, any other presidents you liked a lot besides Hoover? Or? Well, I thought they were all did pretty good. There were a few that uh, I didn't agree with everything that they did, but uh, it's a job that uh, you can't second guess on that either. And uh, with my mentality, and uh, I think that the presidents get blamed for a lot of things that are not their fault oh. when you have Congress and uh, all the things that can happen that he doesn't want it to happen. <laughs> and uh, if he's not on your side, politics is something that I am not too happy with at all. I, yeah. I have seen too many cases of where uh, if you know the right guy, uh, you can get something done, and the poor guy that doesn't know him has to suck. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, the way it, it's just about the way it is. Um, what, let's see here. Do you see any, I'm sure you, you've seen a lot of it, but what are, you, what are your feelings on it? Um, is it rapid techni uh, like technology as it changes? Through the years, I mean, it's, you've seen so much. You've seen they land on the moon, and you've seen um, TVs and from the radios, and TVs. What do you think of all that? Just well, I I have been uh, afraid of it only for this reason. I can't uh, actually see how they can take this little teeny object that's millions and millions of miles away and uh, <laughs> set dials and ship something up there and expect it to get there in four years and by golly it hits there yeah. and uh, I cannot fathom just how they do that. It's just beyond my <laughs> capacity to think that but I think that uh, I'd say and uh, I think you're in a terrific uh, position the year you were born and the year that years ahead of you you're going to see so many changes that it's just going to be wonderful because yeah. they're they're working on everything. Health is going to be great. Look how people uh, used to die. Uh, Forty was old, right? And fifty, boy, you were a, you were a real Superman then. If you lived to be fifty, today uh, the insurance records show that uh, the average of a woman today is seventy-eight, and a man is seventy-two. So, and they predict within ten years it will go up five more years. So it's going to be great. You'll probably live to be 95. Yeah, I was... And if you eat well and take care of yourself, you might live to be 100. <laughs> I hope. I hope. Yeah, yeah that's, that's really amazing. You've seen a lot, though. I mean, just from the radio, I mean, you see this box and they cut it looks like a picture and they call it a TV. I mean, this is just blowing your mind. So well, I think the greatest advancement I've seen is uh, what you're using right now uh, from the little box camera with a little uh, pinhole and a little uh, thing where they went to uh, all the things now. Uh, you pick up a camera and you don't do anything. You just push a button. Everything yeah. happens. It's on. You're, you have to put the roll in, but that's all. <laughs> it rolls itself and everything else. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a big one too. Um, okay, I'm going to switch talk this one more time. Um, what's your, I'm, I'm sure you thought about this, but what's your life philosophy? I mean, what have you always thought of, like, just, like, experiences and life philosophy, as I put it. Just, what do you think of life as is? Well, you see, I'm very fortunate to be living. Uh, I don't know whether I ever told you the story about my lip. Uh, I, uh, put an electric plug in my wife, in my, my life. In <laughs> your wife. <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, yeah. sister was ironing and she pulled it out of the iron and the telephone rang and she put it on the wall okay. she just had it hang and instead of it hanging it fell and it hit the baseboard and it broke the uh, bakelite there and exposing the two copper wires. I wasn't even two years old at the time and I crawled over, I was still crawling, not even walking, crawled over and picked it up and put it in my mouth. My mother had walked up the basement stairs and she had the laundry in her hands and she saw me sitting there. She said I was sitting there with my hair straight up in the air, both hands up in my head like this and the plug sticking out of my mouth. And she came over and pulled the plug out of the wall immediately. Right. The doctor said if she had pulled it out of my mouth, I couldn't have made it because the saliva would have kept the electricity in contact and I probably would have expired. But pulling it out of the wall, it broke the contact, but it burned my lip off to the point where for two years I was fed with straws and spoons. Fed very uh, yeah. <laughs> carefully. 
And as it, I'm fortunate that it grew like it did, I just have a lump here and a lump on the inside about the same size. But I was never able to eat soup very good because when I put the spoon there, it always ran down my chin. <laughs> but uh, my philosophy as a result of that has been uh, take advantage of every break that you can and as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. And I've always felt that uh, honesty is the best policy. And even though it may hurt sometimes, in the long run, you're going to be paid off uh, as long as you do. Well, do unto others as you would have them do unto you is a right. good philosophy. Yeah. Okay, I'm too big for some chicken and Okay, let's go. All right. Um, back to what? What's your feelings on um, religion? Well, I think that uh, every man has a right to his own thoughts and uh, religion, and uh, I have been uh, very religious, uh, thinking of the Lord as uh, I should, and as much as I'm still alive. <laughs> right. And uh, I have attempted to pay back by uh, being very active in church. Uh, having uh, given my time as uh, doing little things when the kids were in school I'd help uh, in, in school and church and uh, then in the men's league and uh, I was president of the Holy Name Society and uh, I was an usher and I ran all the dances that uh, they had over at our church and uh, all the dances that the ladies didn't run. The ladies had their own little dances. They right. ran too. But then uh, I became an extra minister at the, the request of the uh, Father Price, who was the uh, parish priest at the time. And I said, I just want to. Here, St. Vincent. Oh, St. Vincent. Yeah. Okay. I said that I didn't think I was worthy of it. And Father Morahan uh, said, We need people. Uh, you're worthy of it. Get up there. I want you up there. So I said, Okay went through the little education they give you and uh, became a lector and a story minister. <laughs> How long have you been doing it for? Oh, since 19, let's see, Lito was 18, uh, 20 years ago. Really? Yeah. Been there for a while? Yes. So long ago. Um, what's your opinions on um, bringing up children? You had four? Three. Three children? Three children. children. Louise, Anita, and Art. Uh, I think that uh, it's wonderful. Uh, they've given us a lot of pleasure, a lot of enjoyment, a lot of laughs, grandchildren. a lot of heartaches. Yeah, I got nine grandchildren. And uh, uh, they're all close. They all live uh, in a close area, and we spend a lot of vacation time together, uh, all the holidays together. And uh, I feel wonderful about, about the fact that. Uh, the kids have uh, accepted us as much as we've accepted them. And in bringing up our own kids, uh, we gave them a lot of leeway, but we were very strict as far as uh, their education. It's panned off because they're all very intelligent kids. Uh, Louise got a scholarship to uh, St. Teresa's. Not monetary, but a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Monetary because they check your background. If you're making too much money, they don't give you any to go to school. But uh, I believe in giving kids uh, leeway, and I believe in uh, them being able to bring their friends into the house whenever they want to. Not strict on uh, anything. I think my wife is a little stricter than I am because she had to put up with it more than I did. I was at work part of the time. <laughs> but they've paid back. They've uh, given back everything we've given them. That's great. That's really, that's really great. Um, think of anything about how do you feel about your grandchildren I have a lot of fun uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, get to babysit with uh, my oldest grandchild Danny and then when Sheila came along uh, babysat for her and you get to know them a lot you get to play with them and they get to know you and uh, pretty soon uh, grandma and grandpa are kind of favorites because you know you can do things that their parents couldn't do and get away with it because we would do it and then we'd go home. <laughs> <laughs> and with the young ones now, even today, uh, uh, 
they have a lot of fun with them, and uh, I enjoy them very much. Uh, babysit for them occasionally, and uh, well, Art's got three. Uh, he's got Jill, Emily, and uh, Christine. Louise has uh, Danny and Sheila, mm -hmm. and Anita's got uh, Robin, Allison, and the twin twin boys. So it's a uh, it's a good uh, family uh, that we have, and very close, which makes us very happy because so many other people of our friends tell us how lucky we are that they're very close family. They're close family because all my other sisters, uh, their kids are spread out all over the country. Right. What's your favorite music, I guess? Well, uh, I usually listen to whatever uh, the kids turn on because you don't have much choice. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, the old time music the best. Uh, we did a lot of dancing in the uh, 60s and the 70s, even in the 80s. Uh, I loved to sing. I was in the glee club in high school, but uh, they told me my voice is no good now. <laughs> My grandchildren always read me, don't sing so loud, Grandpa. But uh, the music that I enjoy is uh, the old time music from uh, the waltzes and the good songs that have a nice beat to them. And not too much of uh, songs today, I have a hard time. I enjoy them. I like to dance to them and I like to listen to them, but I have a hard time hearing the words. I can't. But yeah. the words, today's music are. Repeat it over and over, over and over and over, and over again. Yeah. It is true. It's very much true. What's your um, favorite hobby? I guess to it. Well, I can't say I have a favorite because I enjoy bowling, I enjoy golf, I enjoy ping pong, uh, and I have my collection. Right. And with the collection, it's a uh, it's a mixture because I can go down in my basement and. Uh, start working on coins, and if I get tired of that, I'll you know, fool around with the stamps. If I get tired of that, I can go to the war mementos, and uh, having to dust them all the time, I'm always touching something, uh, in some collection. Uh, of something. Yeah. I, uh, of the 25,000 items, I figured out that there are... 25,000? 25,000 items. Okay. That's counting like my, my bottle collection, you know, there right. are 150 of those, and uh, Still, I mean, the marbles, there are a thousand of those. <laughs> but uh, it's been very interesting because in trying to uh, set it up on a, trying to remember it kind of a thing, it's pretty hard. Uh, someone will say, well, what do you collect? Well, I finally figured out what I collect, and I have 70 different collections. Yeah. 70 different, uh, different forms. Got a lot of other things, but there are 70. 70 basics. Basics, yeah. Um, okay. What's, um. And I enjoy playing cards. Oh, cards? Playing cards. I can't remember. I'm thinking. Spending time with your family, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, you do naturally, you know. Yeah. Um, how do you. You, you still go to Powers Lake all the time? Yeah. Yeah. And we started going there when I was two years old. My folks took me up there. And uh, we've been going with our kids, and now our kids both have houses up there. Right. Which makes it real nice. But uh, we go up there. We were up there this last weekend. It was very cold. Right. The water was like 40 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we put our pontoon boat in last weekend so that we, oh, really? yeah, so that we can use it whenever we want. It's a nice boat. Uh, yeah. I love that boat. That's great. Um, what were some high points and low points in your life that you learned from it? Well, uh, while I was going to school and during the Depression, I worked in a fruit store. Uh, and I learned uh, very fast how to deal with people, uh, how to treat people. Occasionally you weren't treated by the people the way you would like to, but right. uh, I also used to deliver uh, groceries. the groceries, and I worked in a gas station, and uh, cut grass and things like that, and learning to do these things, uh, I found out that people will treat you nice if you treat them nice. Okay. And even if they don't treat you nice, when they're treating you bad, they won't treat you as bad as they would if you had not treated them nice. And I always found out that if you smile, 
they can't be mean. They kind of lose that mean thought as long as you're smiling. You know? And uh, the other things that uh, would refer to the type of question you asked, and I forgot what it was. <laughs> Getting too old. Um, which one? The one I just asked just a second ago? Yeah. Well, oh, some high points and low points. Oh, yeah, high points and low points. Uh, well, the, the low points are always when you lose uh, someone because of uh, sickness or death. Mm -hmm. And uh, my most uh, low points, was I had every sickness that ever came along. Really? Everyone. You name it, and I've had it. From diphtheria, whooping cough, measles, chicken pox, scarlet fever. Uh, I had, uh, I'm trying to think of the one word, I can't. Uh, smallpox and I got that playing golf we were playing golf and uh, we all got thirsty and we started drinking the water out of the little fountains oh, and it's right. uh, crick water and uh, came home the other two guys that I played with uh, were definitely sick but they didn't get smallpox I ended up with smallpox I had pneumonia and I had my appendix out those are sad sad stories but uh, the uh, one of the things that uh, my family always razzed me about, I was the youngest of our, our group, all the guys I hung around with. I was the young guy. So when it came to playing ball, I had to be the bad boy. And when it came to football, I had to carry the bucket of water and that kind of stuff. But uh, they always kid me because when I got scarlet fever, I grew about six inches during the period that I was there really? and they all razzed me they say that's impossible well on television about a year ago there was another guy who said well he can remember when he got out of grammar school he'd gotten scarlet Coffee. fever he said I grew about six inches and when I got came home going back to school the kids all wondered what happened well that's my story and nobody ever believed me except my mother <laughs> except was on TV hey look <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the high points, of course, was uh, uh, meeting Margaret, get married. Uh, children. And the children, each one of them as they came along, and my grandchildren, and uh, all of my sisters too. They were all uh, connected. I don't know what she did. Oh, no, she got it. Uh, and there have been a lot of high points uh, in my jobs that I've had uh, after I came out of the service. I worked at the Western Electric Company and went back. And oh, one of the interesting things before I went into the service, I went to the doctor at the Western Electric Company uh, to see whether I could be accepted into the Air Corps. And uh, he said, no, I couldn't. He says, no, I won't accept you because in examining you, your heart is on the wrong side. And I went home and told my dad. And he said, oh, come on. He said, you're uh, 18 years old or 19 or 20. Uh, what happened to all the examinations that you had prior to this? So I went to my own doctor. And he said, I don't know whether that guy had been drinking or on dope or what. He says, but your heart's perfect. And they'll grab you the moment you sign that line, which they did. Your heart is there. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, okay, well, the last major area. I did, um, it's a funny question. Um, how, do you, how do you feel about the way you look? I mean, physical attractiveness. Like... Were you always ever worried about that, or...? No, I never let it be concerned because I had the defect in my lip, and I had rather large nose, so uh, my... and I had real curly hair, so. and I had four sisters, and the four sisters used to tell me to comb my hair and uh, make sure that I had lifesavers in my mouth all the time. So they kind of bug you about that? And, yeah, they did. They tried to groom me, but it didn't work. <laughs> But I never really worried. I accepted whatever it was, and uh, uh, in fact, until uh, I got into high school, I never even bothered to really comb my hair properly. I would run the comb through it, and that, that was, was it. Yeah. Okay, um, about physical attractiveness of um, the community you live in. 
like the area at um, Ellen Park? I'm satisfied with Ellen really? Park. It's always been nice. Of course, when we moved here first, uh, I could see Harlem Avenue. Really? Yeah, from here, yeah, there was only three houses between here and there going straight in our direction. Huh. I could see the church at, Nor at uh, St. North Avenue, St. Vincent. From here, there were like, oh, many houses, but uh, you, can still see it. you could still see all the way through. In the wintertime, it was real clear. In the summer, of course, the trees kind of blotted it out, but they were not as tall as they are now. They were even right. short. <laughs> and Elmwood Park's been, been good to us uh, as far as, uh, with one exception, and uh, that was when they burglarized, well, two. They stole a car from out in front of the house, mm -hmm. and they also burglarized the house when we were on vacation. Those are the only two bad things that ever happened to us here. How long have you been here for? We've been here for uh, 43 years. 42 years? Yeah. Huh. There wasn't much around here 43 years ago. No, there wasn't. It was <laughs> yeah. sparse. How do you feel about the community itself, the community pride? Well, it's... Uh, up and down, the politics have played a lot with it. It's been very good uh, to one extent. They've done about everything that the people in this area have wanted them to do. Mm -hmm. Our taxes have gone up too high, of course, and everybody has that same complaint. But it's been very good. The community uh, is not uh, depreciated, it's appreciated. And uh, most of the people in the area have kept their homes in pretty good condition. Yeah, and they're really changing nice. our neighborhood changes. Uh, I'd say we've had, uh, like, uh, on both sides of us, we've had uh, three different groups Families? of neighbors across the alley, three, uh, across the street, three. Uh, if you could spread out on the block, uh, the older people move and the younger people move Amen. in. Yeah. Usually that's what happens. How about transportation? Around here? Oh, this has been perfect for transportation because it. If you wanted to, you could walk to Harlem Avenue and get a bus and yeah. go to Lake Street. Be elevated, or you can go north, transfer, go downtown. Right. Uh, the train is right up here. You can walk to the train and take the you metro. downtown in yeah. 18 minutes. Yeah, that's great. That's very, very nice. Yeah. And uh, uh, automobile-wise, we're close to. Uh, used to be, we could take Washington Boulevard. Right. Uh, right downtown, and you go downtown in 20 minutes. Uh, traveling 30 miles an hour, all this, uh, the stop lights were set. Okay. You traveled 30 miles an hour, you'd get go all the way downtown. What? No what? stops. And now, of course, with Eisenhower, it's been real easy. And we're yeah. close to Tri-State for going north or south. And, and the Eisenhower is good for uh, going out to uh, Naperville, where Louise Anita lives. North Avenue has been pretty good going to where Art lives, so it's pretty good that way. Yeah, how about the schools? The right. school system has been great. It was good for the kids because uh, the grammar school was at St. Vincent's Church, which was real close. Yeah, that's and walking distance. It's walking distance. On rainy days, I drove the kids all the time. Right. Uh, and uh, then I would go on to my job. I was right. in the automobile business at the time in Oak Park. And it was easy for me just to drop them off because their school started about the same time our work started. Yeah, they had Trinity right here. Trinity was very good for them. Art yeah. went to Fenwick, which was very close. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Louise went to uh, St. Teresa's, but uh, both Anita and Art went to Triton. Oh, okay. And then uh, Louise went on to, or Anita went on to uh, Northern. I mean, to. Uh, yeah, she went to Triton and then to North, and Art did the same thing. That's great. And you just said your taxes are there. How do you feel about them? Do you wish they were lower? Yeah, I feel that they're... Uh, oh, pol politics take uh, away a lot. Uh, uh, the big example is seen in the headlines in yesterday morning's paper. $52 billion found in the uh, treasury of the government that they it's in the defense. never been used, you know. Yeah. They found it in, uh, they said they found it in the it's State Department. It's a combination of like uh, six or seven departments that never used they it. give them so much and they only use part of it. So the right. rest of the surplus sits there. Now what are they going to do with that? They'll find something to do with that, I'm sure. Something good, we hope. Yeah. Um, really like the community life here then, huh? 
Oh, yeah. It's really rewarding to you? It's been very good because uh, we've met a lot of nice people. Uh, the majority of our friends are uh, uh, still in the area. And uh, we started uh, uh, playing cards with them, bridge, and uh, bowling, and golfing. And uh, it's nice that way. Yeah. How about the, the, um, the crime rate? You said you had, you've been... Is it, is it bad? Is it normal? Is it... No, it's increased. It was bad, uh, of course. We had uh, little episodes that would happen every now and then, uh, 20 years ago. Uh, but it's uh, predominantly local now. Yeah. And uh, reading the paper, uh, it's, it's really getting bad. It's getting to the point where the women have to be very careful. Uh, just this week, a couple of friends of ours... Uh, walking up to their house from the garage, had their purses stolen. Hmm. Uh, and my sister-in-law, Emily, uh, pulled into her garage, and the guy came running up, uh, grabbed her purse, and ran. And she ran down the alley after him. We asked her, what would you have done if you had caught up to him? She said, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know why it was just natural to run after him. Right. And it's happened to, uh, oh, too many people. Uh, all around, and there are a lot of automobile thefts in the area too. Yeah, yeah I know it's been going up. How about um, historical landmarks? There are not too many around, but there are a couple. What? Yeah, there are quite a few in Oak Park uh, with uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. the Frank Lloyd Wright and uh, Hemingway, and uh, uh, there are uh, a few places like uh, they have the Italian. Uh, uh, Museum on Grand Avenue in Elmwood mm -hmm. Park. Uh, there's the couple of memorial places in Oak Park. Uh, I don't think there are too many landmarks in River Forest. Um, Maywood has a couple, and uh, there are a couple I just can't think about top of my head. There are a couple of Indian like ramp landmarks. Yeah, yeah. Like a couple. I think Trailside is one though. Yeah, Trailside will be because they were going to take it down, but yeah. they voted that out. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a shame to. Uh, destroy that. Yeah, it's, it's a... That's a place where uh, you want to get your kids a little bit educated on what they don't see. It's so nice to go there. It's nothing fancy. It's no. uh, just run by uh, people who are willing to give their time and uh, effort. And they'll take, I know I've taken, uh, kids took turtles over there that got sick. We found birds that had broken wings or uh, something there. wrong with them. We take them over there. Yeah. Works out real nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, Last question. Okay, um, about the 50 years you've been, oh, well, you've been here, what, 43 years, you said? 40 years. Yeah, we've lived here in this house 43 years. You've seen it, have you really seen a change from then and now? Yes, uh, the houses were always made of brick and mm -hmm. uh, real thick uh, uh, plaster on the inside, and of course today they make it out of plaster board, mm -hmm. and majority of the homes are made of wood and aluminum siding. And uh, I'm afraid that uh, our house will last a long time, but I'm afraid some of the houses that uh, they're building today are just not going to last that long. They're going to have to put an awful lot of additional work in them to make them last. Because they're not, they're not as strong as they used no. to be. Yeah. My house is made out of stucco. We had, a, we had to drill a hole through the outside wall, the inside wall. Yeah. We went through stucco, then like a layer of wood, the inside and then like Insulation. three inside walls. It was yeah. like, you know, it must have been a foot thick. Yeah. The house yeah. itself. I was just, I couldn't even renew our well, house. Well, that was what they used to do. It was, was yeah. if you had a, a home that was one foot, you had a well built house. Right. Yeah. But when they come to like uh, these six inch deals that they end up with, the prefab houses, yeah, they're, they're yeah. not that good. Anything else you want to say? I'm pretty much. No, oh, I enjoyed your uh, little visit. I yeah, hope it's, it's been uh, profitable for you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, there's a lot of things I've known you for two years now? At least. Or longer. Some things I didn't, some things I didn't, some of the questions I knew already and the answers, but some I didn't know, like um, stuff about World War II. I didn't know, and some of the stuff I didn't, I just didn't. Well, you know, the questions that you ask about World War II uh, are pretty hard to answer, really. Yeah, no, it's... Like, uh, in as much as I had uh, all these little mementos, 
one of the girls went to Triton and was taking a course there, and he also teaches at Oak Park High School. Okay. And uh, one of the things he does is bring different people in with different ideas. And they were studying history in World War II, and they, he asked me if I would. She said that I would probably help him out if he wanted to, so he asked me if I would come. So I took about uh, 50 items over there from the war yeah. and uh, showed them to the kids and explained what they were for. And uh, the time I spent one hour there, and that hour time, uh, it's you cover only just a fraction, fraction of time really you know, after you, when you're in the war that long. Yeah, wars could be positive and negative. The technology to come out of a war is really positive, but all the, all the, you know, all the human side of it, and all the friends you lose, and all the all you have to go through just for the war itself is really, yeah. really a tragedy. Well, it's it's one way of uh, for men and women now because it's uh, both sexes are involved. It's yeah. it's a learning discipline, and uh, I mean real discipline. You don't fool around. You know, you do your toe. Right. And uh, wrong or right. Yeah. And they used to say, you know, the right way, the wrong way, and the army way. <laughs> yeah, it's three ways. Okay, I think it's like harder thing. Um, I was asking one thing. What was I asking? Oh, I remember. Do you mind if I, um, like, like film a little bit of the basement? Your collection? Oh, no. Go ahead. Okay. Sure. Uh, I think the only thing I. The only trouble I have is one side of the section of the basement. I had the uh, public service come out. Gas company came out because of swordfishes, the kind that uh, have uh, ragged edges, and uh -huh. this is the smooth type. This is like uh, cuddle. You know what a cuttlefish is? And the cuddle bone. This is uh, uh, from an Indian grave. On the Indian graves in the olden days, they always put, and they may still do it now, uh, something similar to what the person was. Like this man was a brave warrior, and that's the uh, axe that he used. Huh. This is your whole collection, 25,000? 25,000 items. Total. Yeah. These are uh, war mementos all along here. This is from a Japanese Betty. That's the radio and the uh, intercom. This is the control for the uh, gas. This is another one from the, that's a joystick from a Japanese Zero. That long thing right there? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. This is a German helmet. How'd you get all these Japanese stuff? Everything I have has been given to me by somebody that, you know, found it someplace or they right. had it at home, they collected it. Or they got it from the war itself, from the yeah, enemy. From, yeah. What's that hit, that um, Nazi? That's, that's the Nazi badge? insignia. That's a, a German camouflage helmet. This is a helmet from World War I, where the bullet went in this side, came out the other side, and the uh, soldier lived because they have padding in the top of it. Oh, I see it, yeah. This is an Indian water mug. That The story that I got was that it belonged to the daughter of Minnehaha. This is all hand woven and then they pack mud on it and uh, the mud is on here for years and years and years. And Wait, you just this, got this? No, no, I've had this for years. This, oh, is about, really? this is about 300 years old or more. It belonged to the daughter of Minnehaha and uh -huh. they say her name was Laughing Water. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing Water? Yeah. This That's... is a, a Swiss music box. That's about 150 years old. Huh. There's my collection of pens in this... Uh, oh, and all these little jars? In the jars, yeah. Those are jars that were in my mother's kitchen. They say beans, tea, coffee. <laughs> right. That's what they say on the jars. <laughs> that helmet is really... Just that bullet that went into this the This is uh, uh, one of the first newspapers ever made. No Boston way. Gazette. That was 1770. Gazette. Where's the date? Oh, there it is. Huh. This is a, a sample of all the sand, soil, and mud from the well that they dug at the Western Electric Company. And uh, this was as they were going down to say how many feet they had gone and what it was. Shale and uh, sandstone. 
uh, different types of uh, uh, Glietla. <laughs> I can't remember how they pronounce that. That newspaper is 1770, huh? That yeah. One that says Gazette on top yeah. right there? Yeah. That's wild. Well, how'd you get that anyway? Uh, somebody from the olden days gave it to me. Oh, really? What is... What animal is that? This is a uh, Komoda lizard. Okay. That's a vegetarian. And they are... That's the last of the prehistoric monsters. And this is the only one that uh, has teeth that uh, don't eat other animals. Really? They only eat vegetables. How old is it? Uh, I don't know how old this particular one is. I've had it for uh, about 10 years. Oh, really? That's a diamondback rattlesnake The one on top? The one on top. And that was shot in Arizona. And at the time, the farmer, not the farmer, the uh, cowboy that shot it, it was trying to kill one of the horses that were in, it was in the uh, corral there. He was wrapped around the horse's neck. The snake was, trying, was? Yeah, the snake was. How long was it? At that time, it was 12 foot. Oh, this, that's... Of that's... course, when they cut down to fit in the frame. Right. The frame is about three feet. Yeah, it's about four and a half feet. Yeah, four and a half feet. Yeah. And hmm. there, this is also diamondback. That's a, a prairie rattlesnake. This is a diamondback, and the one below it is a diamondback. I'll let you film a few things if you want. These are just some of the things down here. Many, many objects he has collected. This is the ceiling, what we're looking at. He covered just about every inch of the ceiling with newspapers. As you can see, some of them are from the Great War. And this one right here says Hitler, suicide drama. That's why I guess when Hitler killed himself. He, uh, he loves his favorite animal is elephants. And he has a lot of elephant things down here. A lot of elephant, a lot of elephant items. Right there, that's a old fashioned dentist chair. Right there. That right there is a, it's like a blanket of Kennedy. The golden pheasant, which is uh, as a regular pheasant, and this is a golden pheasant. There's a little bit of difference in the two of them. These are rare. They're all st this is all stuffed. Yeah, all stuffed. This is a Japanese golden pheasant from Japan. <laughs> See, so you have Japanese birds as well as... It's American. American. Right. Huh. That's a pretty bird. Yeah. The red and the... Yeah. There's a marlin up there. The fish? Yeah. Well, I caught that in 1973. White marlin. Huh. It's pretty big. Yeah. What is that, five feet? Uh, no, it's closer to eight feet. Is it really? Yeah. It goes back, right? Yeah. Back in there. It's amazing you can find room for all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> These are some more. There's a Japanese Samoya Samurai sword. Which one? The one I This see. one right here. Right. This is more war. What's yeah. that black thing up there? That's a... That's a messenger's cap from the war. Oh, is it? From the army. We passed up another item over here. If you want to go back a minute, we passed up the Kaiser's helmet, which is right uh, up here. Oh, okay. I see it. That's going way back to world before World War One. Is it really? Yeah. A lot of this stuff is really... A lot older than you are. Yeah, that's a French helmet up there. The green one? Yeah. And this, this is a... Uh, uh, Safari? No, it's a... Uh, <laughs> trying to think of the guy's name. Uh, Rome. Rommel. Okay. It's a Rommel helmet. And this is the one they wore in the... Uh, the fur? The fur helmet uh, hat is the one they wore in uh, the cold countries that we were fighting in. My best buddy brought that back. To keep warm? Yeah. There's a pair of gloves that they used to wear in the olden days when they drove a car to keep their arms warm in the winter. Because they had no heat in the cars. There was no heat, and so they put their hands in there, and uh, this part would hold it so that <laughs> kept it 
the wind out from going up your arm. Huh. That's a, that's a blowfish, and this is a... Uh, uh, hmm. Which one? That's the blowfish. Okay. And this is the thing that comes along oh, the top the of the water. Right? What? Yeah, that thing hanging right there. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the name, and I... Oh, boy. My memory is going. <laughs> it's okay. Minus two a little bit. <laughs> There's a hand grenade. Uh, is it live? No. No? No. Okay. You don't... No. Is a that couple from... of machetes up there. All this stuff is World War II then, huh? Well, not all of it. Oh, some of it's World War One. Yeah, too? some of it's World War I, and uh, some of it's the Civil War. You, there's a Revolutionary War that uh, Saber up there is from the Revolutionary War. I didn't see it. It's got it. And that's a German... Uh, in the corner up there, that's uh -huh. a German hand grenade. The one that's like a, looks like a... Yeah, that's round. Right. All those it's pieces like stick. fly. Yeah. This table was my great-grandmother's in England, and it has, uh, instead of, you know, like uh, they use nails and everything to put right. it together, this has got little clips under here that uh, would close it together. Huh. It's kind of... This cash register came from Horwath's restaurant. Very nice. And it has, uh, it's different in the, it's got the amount that right here. And what they would do with the uh, check that they brought, they would slide it underneath here. And stamp and it. And it would stamp it. How old is the cash register? This cash register has got to be uh, 85 years old. Really? How, how old is Horwath's? Restaurant. Horowitz restaurant is, uh, would be 80 years old. 80? Yeah. Where did you get this propeller from? That the propeller wooden? came from uh, Checkerboard Field. That was a uh, United States Aircraft Corporation propeller. That's identical to the one that they used on the Spirit of St. Louis. With Lindbergh flu? Yes, Lindbergh. Hey, U.S. This is U.S. Aircraft US Corporation. U.S. Aircraft Corporation, yeah. Huh. How old is that? That, uh, let's see, I was six, so it's uh, uh, 50, 62 years old. Is it? 63 years old. Old yeah. one for brothers. Oh, where'd you get the armadillo? Or the uh, Anita brought that back from Mexico. <laughs> That's an iguana over there. Oh, the, the one with the curled up tail? Yeah. Huh. Over here is a... Uh, this is from the Haymarket Police uh, Billy Haymarket? Club, the Haymarket uh, Riot. They use that in the Haymarket Riot? Yeah, they use that. Policeman that was in it gave that to us. I am. Um, when I was, I went to this museum and I had an exhibit in the Haymarket Riot. All the stuff. That uh, bronze the head, head yes. is hammered out of a piece of bronze. My dad always said that that Reminded him of a monk who had imbibed a little bit too much. <laughs> this was my grandmother's ironing board. Duh. Going back many, many clock. years, uh, what they did was they wrapped the clothes around that after they'd washed it, uh -huh. and then they'd run it over the top of a rock to iron it. That would make it smooth, take the wrinkles out. It is old. Wait. A lot of beer mugs here, of course. How old, what, how old is that clock? That clock is, was my grandfather's, uh, and he had that in the house, so that would be, let's see, uh, 110 years old. The clock? Yeah. Does it still work, or? Uh, no, because my nephew tried, my nephew Dick, uh -huh. uh, my oldest nephew, uh, tried to fix it, and uh, I don't have one of the other uh, oh, weights. weights on there. Four. I, have been thinking about having a fix, but never had. This is a female antelope, and this is a male antelope. And right next to this, this is my the wife. The horns are different. Yeah. This is my wife's mink. <laughs> Here, honey, here's a mink. <laughs> what does it an animal mink? The shelf is all... That's a hand-painted Indian that was painted on a chamois. And that's over 150 years old. Hmm. 
Now, just like that mink, I have a weasel up here that looks just like it. They're in the same family. Very few people want to say that, but they are. This is our, this shelf here is our... Yeah, these are all my coin collection, my all foreign coins. I have the American coins in boxes, the English coins. This is a piece of elephant hide. And this is a piece of rhinoceros hide. That's why it's so hard to kill them. Because their skin They're is so, so thick. thick. It's got to be an inch thick. Yeah. And in comparison, you can compare these two items. This is Negroid hide. What's that? Tan, Negro, black yeah. man. This is your white man's skin. How'd you get tan. that? From a doctor. Oh, really? Yeah. It's only that thick, huh? Yeah. That's pretty thick. Feel it. Yeah, hold that. Thank you. That's like... That's like... That has to be... That feels like paper, kind of. Well, then the... For a human... Because you, you, you know, you... If you scratch you yourself take, or something. If, when you take your skin... You're right. You know, it, it bleeds fast. Right. But it, when... Uh, if you're a corpse and they take a piece... Of, or if they go to graft a piece of your skin... Right. This is how much they graft. To another part of your Actually, body. it's kind of thick if you really yeah, think it about is. it. Yeah. You, you feel it. And, and look at the difference now they, in, in the thickness of a, a black man compared to a white man. It's almost twice as thick. Their skin is. Of course, their skin is that way because from the territory they originally came from. Uh, Africa. Yeah, it was, you know, the hot, hot weather. This is a pride and joy. <laughs> Maybe I can put this in the light over here. What is that? That's a four-legged chicken. Wait. Let's try to get that. How come it, it was deformed? It was born with four legs. Oh, yeah, I see them. One, two, three, four. Freak of nature. <laughs> My biggest disappointment was when Louise was in school as a teacher, I took uh, all of my animals that I had mm -hmm. to show to the kids in show and tell kind of a deal. Right. And when I did, I saved that to last. And I said to the kids, well, you know, there are a lot of freaks of nature. And I explained what I meant by freaks of nature. And I said, now, uh, I have something I'd like to show you. How many legs does a chicken have? And the kid in the front row hollers, four. He <laughs> blew my whole story. <laughs> this is a cannonball from uh, the Civil War. It's the... It's about as big as a softball. Yeah, about as big as a softball and weighs like uh, 25 pounds. Huh. Very solid, very heavy. Was it made out of lead or steel? That's steel. And before I showed you the Indian that was very brave, uh -huh. this is the Indian that had a big heart. <laughs> what is it? Is it a real heart? No. That's oh. a piece of stone okay. with a lot of uh, different formations in it that uh, sparkle, shine. Right. That was on an Indian's grave also. Oh, that's what that means? To, yeah. It's a heart, so it means a big heart. Is that a real gun, that little corner thing? Which one? It's right there. It's right there. Is that a real gun, that little thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's for shooting blanks. Oh, okay. You can only shoot blanks in it. It looks so small. Yeah. It's like the size of your palm. Well, it's a kind that they kept in their... Purses or... Purse or inside coat pocket. Got a lot of knives down there. I'll show you another type that is very different. This is a Harry Carey knife. You see how it's made? It's jagged. Yes, when you put it in, it goes one way. When you pull it out, it'll right. cut another way. That's to make sure if you're going to commit suicide, you, you do. You do it right. Genuine Harry Carey knife. This is this is just a museum down here, more than... <laughs> this is something that was... One of the prisoners in the Joliet prison made this out of the bones that he had eaten, his spare rib bones. And he fixed this up so it's pretty old now, but he fixed it up so that he could sit there and play with it all day long, watch it do little tricks. Huh. Made out of the bones? Yeah, made out of the bones. The detail is fabulous. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. 
Oh, the tire must have taken him. Do you ever see how chestnuts grow? Uh, I think once. Chestnuts grow this? in a protective cone thing, just like a porcupine. All right. Uh, now you've seen how chestnuts grow. It's an old dollar bill up there. Yeah, that is. I'll show you how walnuts grow. Not walnuts. What do they call? Yeah, is walnuts. Coconut? No. This is a coconut. When you open it up, it's got what used to be called nigger toes. That's how they grow, just like oranges. Right, and you just cut it, and they just cut it yeah. open, huh? They cut it open, take them out. There's a beautiful, some beautiful rocks, part of the rock collection. You just got everything down here. What's that? That's an old well top right there. The black well top. Yeah, that's the pump. Pump. Where was that farm? Do you know? Or? Yeah, it was a farm, but I don't know what farm it was on. Huh. Used to pump water right through that. Yeah. Hill. That's a what kind of cat is that? That's a wild cat. Is it? Yeah. The shovel next to it is a one piece shovel that the man used to shovel snow. And it started to crack one time and then of course they came out with uh, metal shovels. So he took that and painted a design on it and hung it in his dining room wall. <laughs> How do you get most of the stuff? Well, I'm talking to you. You go home and you'll think of something that you don't want anymore, and you bring it over and give it. To me. That's what everybody does. And they just give. They, you've just word of mouth and uh, nice neighbors, nice friends, relatives. The pipe collection here is pretty good too. This is a pipe of peace, Indian pipe. This is a meerschaum cigarette holder. This one. It's all hand carved. That's a meerschaum pipe. This is a water pipe. Cools the smoke it get, comes up. Huh. This is an old timer. The long one? Yeah. yeah. And there's an opium pipe right down here. <laughs> that today it would be very popular. Years ago they used to sit down the old that? time. This is about 200 years old. It's from Japan then, huh? Yeah. They... Well, I don't know whether it's from Japan. It's from the Orient someplace, but... And this cools the water, you know, as the pipe... Came, I mean, the smoke, as the pipe came out. <laughs> use that for me Didn't they use that for medical reasons, though? Or? Sometimes they did, yes. Yeah. They could do that. My Indian head arrows are up in the corner up there. Quite a collection of them. Yeah. And these are all teeth up there and tusks. Of different animals? Of different animals. There's shark and quill and horse and boar, uh, porcupine, snake, calf. That's an Indian paddle you have up there, huh? Yeah, that's from uh, the uh, uh, Hudson Bay Indian canoe paddle. Huh. And it cracked and they sewed it together so that it would, out of leather, right through the wood. Sewed it right up. This took a long time. This is a, uh, from Ringley Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. This is their thermos jar that they hung on the side of their wagon. Really? Yeah. That's... This is a bow and arrow from the Vietnam War. One of the boys brought back for me. These are the arrows. Little things, but deadly. And that's the bow. That thing looks like a T? Yeah. That's the costume that the waitresses wore at uh, uh, Lake Lawn. They were all uh, Indian style. The whole, everybody the whole wore Indian style things. This is a hedgehog right there. The animal? Yeah, he looks like a porcupine, but he is a hedgehog. Huh. Kind of, he does look like a porcupine. Yeah. Light. That they, was from World War II? All yeah, those planes? All the planes. They're the model planes. And those are Japanese, uh, English, American, uh, Canadian. Let's see, what else? Hold on a minute. Uh, French huh. and uh, Russian. 
<clears throat> and we had to be able to recognize it. They would show that plane, and they would let it go shooting by, and you had to be able to tell so you never shot your own planes or your allies. Right. Where'd you get all those? I brought Flames? those back. I brought those back from the war. Oh, really? <clears throat> when we closed up the camp, they were just going to. What we did in Fort Myers, we closed up the camp. They took a uh, tractor, dug up huge holes. We dropped boxes and boxes and boxes of engine parts in there. Oh, really? And uh, all the things that we didn't weren't going to use because they were closing down the camp. Right. The war's over. And they didn't know what else to do with them, so they just buried them. But it was very sh uh, well known later that the places that we had buried them belonged to many of the officers of the Air Corps. Uh. <laughs> so they could go back and unbury them and sell them to, you know, anybody yeah. that needed them. This is uh, from a, a horse. The cords? The cords that in this whole thing used to hang on a horse so that uh, when uh, he was out with the peddler, uh, he could uh, chase the flies away. He'd shake his body and these things would shake and the flies would go away. Oh, I see. Like this is a complete horse blanket on that uh, couch there. The brown? Yeah, the brown part is actually the horse blanket. The fur of the horse itself? Yep. Huh. Riverview Park, is all those little dolls came from, and those tags yep. used to be the place to go. Yeah, now see. Now you go to uh, the sign Riverview Park. America, yeah. That's Great America now, but yeah. they tore that down back in, what, 50? The no, they tore it down uh, no, here about 60s. in the 70s. Oh, 70s? Yeah. They around. condemned it because it was getting too dangerous. <laughs> this is one of my pride and joy. This, these over here, these watches, my grandmother oh, and grandfather's watches. I know they can get I'll zoom in there. Yeah. They're old, aren't they? Yes. How many do you have? One, two, three. Four of them. Four. You stuck them in jars so they'd be airtight? Yeah. Well, they're not airtight, but it just keeps the dust off them. Huh. This is an English Bobby from England replica. Do you have a um? Oh, you're saying a watch from a Hiroshima? No, I don't. Is it you? No. I don't know where it was. Then I remember somebody had a watch, and it was from Hiroshima. Oh, yeah? The exact time it blew up, and it stopped there, but it was burnt. Oh no, I did not. I thought, this is the original I I uh, Mickey Mouse. Hat. Hat? Yeah, that's an original. <laughs> <laughs> Go upstairs and start wearing that around the house. When I was burglarized, they took all my handguns and uh, six of my rifles. You have two. How many have left? These two? Four. You have four left? Yeah. There's an alligator. <laughs> He's on the wall. <laughs> There's, um... There's a reindeer. The head of the reindeer. And there's another one over there, a big one. Yeah, there he is. With a raccoon and a crow. Where's that saddle from the... Saddle? The English saddle? I mean the uh, army so, that's from it. the Civil War. Yeah, that's from the Civil War, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You have a lot of Civil War stuff there. Yes. Oh, look at that old radio. Surprise, that's still around. Yeah, works good, too. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's great. What's those horns from a bull? Yeah, those are from a bull. That's a piece of uh, the door handle from the First World Fair. <laughs> in Chicago, was it? No, that was in... Uh, mm, terrible. Can't remember. remember. There's a piece of the Berlin Wall. This is the latest item I got. Where'd you get that from? Ed Bellack, my brother-in-law, uh, brought it over. Margaret was talking to Laverne on the phone, and she said Carrie had been to Germany and brought back a piece of the Berlin Wall. And she said, oh, don't tell Art. He'd die for the piece of it. So he broke off a piece and brought it over. See how it's colored? Yeah, why? Well, you know how they paint all the wall? Yeah. Every time somebody uh, attempted to get over the wall and died, they would put a cross in the spot where he left if they shot him and didn't make it. Those that made it, fine. But if they didn't make it, that was sad. Huh. Yeah, this is uh, a Civil War United States Cavalry. 
A lot of this stuff is real. There's a bottle of Corbel. Where's that from? The bottle of... Corbel. That's when uh, we got married. We, I mean, when we got engaged, we celebrated with some champagne. How old is that bottle? Uh, let's see. Looks exactly... 55 years old. Looks exactly the same as today's. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's no <laughs> different. My father has a bunch of bottles at home. That's how I know. You know how you open an elephant's trunk? No. The trunk? Yeah, trunk of an elephant. You can open it if you're real careful. See that key? Yeah. Stick this up his hind end and put it right through it. Turn the key and it opens his trunk. <laughs> uh. Uh, some of the stuff. <laughs> What president was that? Let me see in here. That's uh, when Truman took over for uh, when F Franklin J. Roosevelt died. Huh. It's a desk that uh, belonged to my mother and father. One of the first pieces of furniture that my dad bought just before they got married. So that would be, let's see, 90, that would be 99 years old now. The desk? Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, very, very nice. Huh. It's great. This is a, picture of the, of the flag that came from the Western Electric Company in memory of the eight soldiers in that department that... Uh, World War, died in World War One. Yeah, they were in... No, they, they didn't all die, but they were all... They all served. As... That's one of the old speakers. From what? From radio. That's what we used to listen to radio through. You couldn't hear it unless you had earphones or a speaker. You had to have something for it. This is a, a dentist chair, and with the dentist chair, I have all the dentist tools, tools over here. You want to have your teeth fixed. Got all the tools, we can pull them or anything you want. Got everything in there. All the way down there, it's full. Really? Yeah. And the water thing back here to rinse. Oh, and that little box mixes the... Uh, uh, silver for your teeth. I got these cabinets from uh, the barber I used to go to when he closed his shop up. And that's what they used to put their scissors in. And so when he closed the shop, he gave me all his scissors, too. I have them over there in that other one. He gave me three of those cases and all his scissors. So I could cut your hair, too. <laughs> Pull my teeth and cut my hair yeah. on the basement. That's great. I would show you Kim Novak's uh, Miss Electricity costume, but Anita used it for uh, a little skit she was in with her company. <laughs> There's Back there where that light is shining, that is a handmade, uh, that's all silk, and it's uh, Japanese, and it's made by the Chinese, showing that they have the Japanese in their power, where the snake in the middle is the rising sun. Well, at that time, that was not true, but they made this to show that they had it. It was just the opposite. Japan was always higher than uh, China. This is a Edison uh, record. Player. No, not the player. This Your is quarter? what it cleans it. See, this is a dictaphone. And you put this on it, and it uh, gives you all your... Uh, music or whatever you're saying, like I'm right. talking to you, you know, you would right. get that. And then you put it on this machine and put this thing on it and it cleans it off so you can use it over and over again. It's a dictaphone cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> There's the old grinder for meat, meat and coffee. It's an electric grinder. What's the skull, the skull in the back right there? Yeah, that's a, an Indian skull. I, can, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Indian, huh? Yeah, that's an Indian skull. That's over 300 years old. <laughs> kind of scary, actually. Back there, see those boots? 
Yes. I don't know whether you can get those in. Yeah, I got them. Those are, uh, one of my fraternity brothers was uh, shot down. He was a pilot. He was shot down over uh, Germany. He was captured, parachuted, landed, and they issued those boots to him while he was in the prison camp there. When he came home, he still had the boots with him, so he brought them over and gave them to us to put in our collection. And we appreciated it very much, but we made one mistake. Huh. It had all German soil on it, and we cleaned it all off, washed it off. What do you think it says on the bottom? What? Made in England. <laughs> Those German boots they made in England? They made in England. No, that happened. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Oops. This, those flags. I'm trying to get those. The flags? Yeah, this is a barracuda. Oh, yeah. What kind of yeah, fish this, is that? This is a sailfish. Oh, it's a sailfish? Here. Yeah, that's a sailfish. Okay. Huh. An old Coca Cola rack uh, for. That's the kind they used to put ice in, and that's what cooled it, just the ice. And there's a little drain on the other inside so that the, when the ice melted, the water could run out. Maybe you could switch places with me and get these flags. The yeah, the flags we have are all uh, all different. We've got the Japan, India, Pakistan, Hong Kong, Philippine Islands, Costa Rica, uh, Taiwan, Poland, Ethiopia, Germany, and uh, the tropical coast. All different. That was uh, British, isn't it? Yeah. I wish I had uh, a way of displaying them better, oh, but uh, it, it's pretty hard. Yeah, you need that. Uh, yeah, you need more space. Is it Italian or French? This one is India. Oh, it's India? That's India. French. And then, of course, we have the peace the 60s flag. one. And the German flag over here. Now that, that what's was, all the signatures on it from? That was signed by all the guys that were in that uh, uh, battalion when uh, they captured it in Germany. Really? Yeah. All the soldiers' names, huh? Yep, every one of them are on there. Huh. Well, thank you very much for showing me your collection. Right. There's a jaw from a shark down there. Let's get that. Oh, man. Can you imagine? You have just about everything you could possibly find in our house. Yeah, all Coca-Cola items. That's a, a pestle and mortar that they use to, uh, for medicine, to crush, get the crushed, medicine to crush the medicine with. Right back there is a coyote. <laughs> yep. I have my seashells are all in there. That That's an old universal dishwasher, one of the first ever made. And it's full of seashells. <laughs> Run out of space. Yeah. My run wife, out of basement. My wife won't let me go into her part. Yep. There are uh, 2,500 matchboxes in this collection. And I have a bushel basket that has an additional 2,500, plus all these that are on this I know. thing here. Huh. This is something interesting, a souvenir of the World Exposition. My picture back in 1933, and if you move this... Wait, wait. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah, move it. The face changes as you yeah, move it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really neat. Yeah, there's a double image there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. This wall has a hawk I right here. It? That's a hawk. And there's that. What kind of animal is that right there? That's a hawk. So oh, the, this is a deer. Oh, it's a deer? Yeah, deer skull? that's a deer skull. Huh. And I got spoons from all over. Tiny. This is a candle from a ship. And when the ship moves, the candle Come will on. always remain steady so that the light didn't go away. This is one of the first uh, candle lights that they had in the Santa Fe Railroad. Oh, that's beautiful. Is that brass? Yes. This is uh, pictures from the World War. Uh, from, uh, not the World War, from the World's Fair. Huh. This was the Eastland disaster picture. That's when uh, the Western Electric Company had their picnic, and they were all going to take a ride on the Eastland right. and Chicago River, and uh, 
they all went to say goodbye and they all went to one side of the boat and the boat hadn't had the water in it to make it buoyant yet and it turned right over. 900 lives were lost. It's the Chicago River, huh? Yep. I remember the that. The biggest tragedy they ever had other than, the, you know, the big fire. What happened to that uh, club? <laughs> that's just... <laughs> That's a putter, they're a joking putter. <laughs> oh, okay. I was wondering, why is, is there something, why is that bad deck? That? This is my daughter's score where she beat me. 258 oh. was her high score, and I've never been able to reach it. <laughs> this is something else over here that, that when we were in uh, uh, SeaWorld, Louise was picked to kiss Shamu, the whale. <laughs> And this is Anita when she was pregnant with the twins. That's Allison underneath her. This is something that uh, is, this used to be the Philip Morris insignia call for Philip Morris. I don't know whether you ever heard that commercial. Yeah. That was little Johnny. <laughs> What's this? I What's think I did most of the highlights. Yeah, most of the highlights so we can go on forever. What's that bomb? That's a Navy bomb. Is it? Yeah, Naval airplane bomb. Oh, this is a dolphin. That's a female dolphin, and back there is a male dolphin. Huh. This is a barn owl. And this is an ermine. I don't know whether you got the snow owl over on the other side when you were... The what? The snow owl up on top of that case. You might have gotten it yeah. if you were swinging past. That's signs of scarlet fever. Keep out. That's when you had it, huh? Yeah, that's when I had scarlet fever. Mm -hmm. This is a barracuda. That's the one you got to be really careful of. Look at the teeth on this thing. And here's my autograph section. Up in here, I've got all the autographs of all the... Baseball players? Baseball, football, basketball, hockey, uh, and some famous people. Hmm. And I took all my postcards from Powers Lake because we had those. We go there so much, and I put them all on one board so that it could be seen. And that's interesting to people, you know, who have been there and seen it and know what it's like. What is that turtle? That's from? a stuffed turtle. Is it? Yeah. This is from World War I. That's a cannon uh, shell. <laughs> you made it into a vase. Yeah. And it's uh, got World War I written on it. There's another one of the same type, only instead of making it as fancy as this, they hit that with a hammer. Right. What's that flag? With the oh, that's a uh, Japanese uh, uh, peace flag. It's okay that there's no damage. Nothing's wrong on their ship. And the, there's a red one way back there that uh, they fl they take this down. If they're having trouble, they put their red flag up. It means they're, they're in trouble? Yeah. Huh. Okay, thank you very much. I think I've covered all the highlights. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate uh, your time. My time. Your time. Thank you very <laughs> much. It's, it's, what a basement. What a basement. Just about everything, every square inch down here is covered. Yeah, almost. It's, uh, anytime I get something new, I have to move something else to get something else to put in this place. And I'm surprised you haven't dug another basement underneath this for more stuff. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.